Hey friend, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today I've got some new tools in my craft room and I wanted to share them with all of you. We're gonna put these tools through lots of tests as we create and I wanna show you guys what they can and can't do so by the end of the video you can see if you want them in your craft room as well. I'll have links down below to everything I used and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get into it. So this first tool is this large white craft mat made by Glassboard Studios, and I'm filming this on my iPhone to get it all in frame here. This is a super high quality white glass mat, so the white is really nice and bright, so you can see your inks and pastes and whatever you put on top of it. And you can get it in many sizes, but here I chose the 18 by 24 board, and you can also get it in many different colors, which is really awesome. And if you want a glass craft mat, Glassboard Studio was kind enough to give me a discount code for all of you. So if you use code SIMON20 at the link down below in their checkout, you'll get 20% off of your purchase. And there's actually a piece of metal on the back of this glass board so that it makes it magnetic. So you can also purchase these little magnets that go along with it to magnet down your projects and hold things in place. And we're gonna test these out too. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a piece of mint tape to hold down my cardstock. You need to do this to just hold it down to the surface and make sure that it doesn't move while we do our ink blending. And then I'll place it down on the surface. And then I'm going to use the Dazzling Diamond Layering Stencil Set, which has three different layers in it. I'm gonna start off with the first layer here. We'll lay it down onto our card project. And then you know what? I'm gonna use the magnets to see how these hold in place as we do our blending. And we're also gonna be testing out the Altenew Ink Blending Brush. They sent me a couple of these to use in my videos and I wanted to test them out. Each one comes with its own little holder to keep the bristles protected and also keep the color off of your surfaces. These are a nice flat brush, so they're gonna take lots of color in there and they come white. Here I've already started using it with blue ink and I love that they're white so you can see exactly what color's on the surface here. I'm gonna go in starting off with no diving and ink up my blending brush and test this out. So with magnets, you can test out to see if they work just on their own. They're not moving, but I'm not applying tons of pressure. If I go in and apply lots of pressure, I would say you probably should hold it down with at least a hand as well. But the magnets do do a really nice job of holding it in place, as long as you have a little bit of assistance. Because if I was just using my hand, it would kind of move all over the place. This at least gives you a little bit of assistance and you can still hold it down. Now the reason why I love this is because you can cover tons of surface area with this brush. I love that it's got those nice flat bristles and it's quite a large brush so we can do a background really nice and easily. So I'll just keep going in and inking up the rest of this stencil. All right, and I also wanted to comment on the comfort of these brushes while you're blending. So there's a couple different ways you could hold them. You could of course do kind of how I am right now. You could put both fingers in here and sort of hold it like this as well, which gives you a nice amount of support if you want to add a bit more pressure down onto the surface to get a darker color. There we go. We'll lift off these magnets and then lift off the stencil to reveal the start of our design. That blending brush did a really nice job of getting smooth and even coverage. All right, moving in with the next stencil, we're going to line it up in between the last design that we created to fit these diamonds into place. And then again, I'm going to use these magnets again to hold it in place, but of course you could use some tape as well. Now when it comes to these sort of blending brushes, I have seven of them for each different color family because if we're using greens, it's pretty easy to switch over to another green, but you don't wanna switch over to like a red or something because then you're gonna get brown, right? So to clean these brushes in between colors, all I need to do is just wipe it off on the side and you'll see lots of that green color is coming out of that brush. I don't tend to wash these thoroughly, just a nice wipe off to the side and then we can go into a different color. So this is a lighter green color, it's called Psych. It's almost like this neon green. I'm gonna go into here and lift this off using that same green brush. And then I'm gonna go in here and start blending it down. And I wanna talk about why I use blending brushes sometimes in my projects, because this doesn't really replace the foam blending tools for me. I really love those for applying color like super fast and super vibrant. But if I'm using blending brushes like this, it's usually for one of a couple different reasons. One of the reasons is if I wanna apply a lighter color, this makes it a little bit easier to apply it lighter and then build it up. But another reason would be if I'm using a stencil like this, where it's got lots of little points in it, sometimes the foam blenders skip over those points and don't make them as sharp, whereas here, those little bristles get into all of the details and give you a really sharp looking design. So I'll lift this off and you can see what I mean. They're really nice and sharp with these diamonds. They don't skip over any of the areas. 
All right, last but not least, we're going in with the final layer. We're gonna line it up in between the other diamonds here. And with these stencils, they're pretty easy to line up. Like if you use a piece of square cardstock that's six by six, and you just line the cardstock up with the edge of the stencil, it lines the whole design up perfectly. But you can also see where they really easily fit in if you're not using a square of cardstock to match the stencils. But I have seen people line these up totally differently to create completely unique patterns. So that's what's awesome about having building stencils like this is you could use one of the layers, you could use all of the layers, and you could really get lots of different designs as you create with it, depending on how you shift it and use the stencils. All right, we'll lift off these magnets, and there we have our final design. I love how this background turned out with all of that stenciling, and again, because we use these brushes, the edges of those diamonds are super sharp. As far as the magnets on the glass craft mat, I'm not gonna sit here and say that it was a hands-free experience. You still have to hold the stencil quite firmly, and it still moves just a little bit. So if you wanna be cautious, just use some tape, but this could be helpful for like if you're holding down projects or things like that, that you're not really ink blending against where you're putting lots of pressure. It would be nice for that. It's really just an added feature for me because I was really just looking for a work surface that cleans super easily after the messes, but having it magnetic is just a little bit of a bonus. It wasn't something I was really looking for because I've already got some great tools for stenciling. All right, now let's keep putting these blending tools through the test as well as the craft mat. Here I'm going to use a little bit of Bee Sting ink and we're gonna go right onto our cardstock to do our blending and test how smoothly it blends. So I'm starting off at the bottom here using a little bit of Bee Sting and I'm going to just start blending onto my surface. You can see there's a little bit of a mark there, but as far as smoothness, this is really applying quite nicely and my inks are quite forgiving when it comes to blending. So if we just blend up to that point, it will probably help to smooth that out. You can see the color isn't super dark when we first apply it. You definitely have to build the color up with these, but that's expected because that's how all blending brushes are. That's what I really like about them. For beginners, they're really easy because you can really nicely apply a super light color at first or build it up to get the color intensity that you want to, but you're not worried about getting tons of harsh marks because they blend pretty soft on the surface here. Now, of course, let's blend this into another color. Here, I'm going in with the orange blending brush and I'm going to use a little bit of guppy. Again, if you used a darker orange and you're moving into a lighter one, just make sure to wipe your brush off on the side first. And then I'm going to go right in and start blending out the color. And the other thing that I love about these ones is they've got such a large surface area compared to many of the brushes on the market. So you're really easily able to cover a lot of the surface at once, like look how simple it was to just lay down all of that orange color. And you can see with my inks, as we blend over more colors, um, it really smooths out so you can barely even see that little tiny harsh mark that we got and we're really starting to build this background nicely. So we'll just kind of fade this color out. Just love that color blend. And in between it created a new color, so we've got red, dark orange, lighter orange, and then almost going into a yellow. That's what I love about these blending brushes, they blend so smoothly into these colors. And then of course I think we expect it's going to clean up really nicely. I'll just spray down a little bit of water and glass mats clean up the ink really beautifully. But I like that it's white so you could see when you have a mess, so you're not gonna stick your project accidentally into ink. I wanna add a bit of texture, so I'm going in using the tiny diamond stencil. I'll lay it onto the surface here, and then we can go in and I'm gonna sort of aim my water starting from this bottom area and going lighter as we go up. So I'll just go in here and mist this surface down with quite a bit of water and that water is going to beautifully react with the ink and lift off some color. So there we go. You can see it's already starting to lift color. And if we want to sort of help in the drying process and aid in intensifying that, I'll go in with my heat tool too and start heating this up. And you can see it continues to react with that color and gives a nice lightening effect. I just love what it does to these inks. And check that out, once it's all dry, we get such a beautiful ombre of color. I love that lightening effect with the stencil. It really adds tons of interest to that beautiful blend that we created. All right, now we're really gonna put this glass craft mat to the test with tons of mess, with lunar paste, because I think they're gonna clean up really beautifully off of here. So I'm using the Moroccan tile background stamp. I love this one because it's got lots of solid surface area, so it's gonna be great for this stamping technique. I'll flip it over on my surface here, and then I've grabbed a couple of lunar pastes. I'm going to use triple berry, prom queen, and then a little bit of slippery and wet, and we're gonna stamp this onto a dark colored cardstock. Now for this technique, we're going to take a little bit of lunar paste out of our jar with our palette knife. This is the palette knife from the paste tool set, and I'm going to create a palette of color. To do this, I'm just laying down a really nice thin layer of color. We don't want any globs, and I'm just applying it straight to my craft sheet to create a nice palette to lift the colors off of. 
Moving into Prom Queen, I'll do the exact same thing, apply a thin layer of color to create a nice palette. In the past, I had been doing this with little pieces of acetate, but I prefer not making as much waste, and I like the idea of just having it on my craft sheet here while I'm working because it's a nice protected surface. I'll wipe off in between colors and move into the last color, which is gonna be slippery when wet. Okay, then we're going to go in with a clean foam blending tool. I'm gonna to start off with the lightest color. So here I'm going in with Slippery When Wet first, and you wanna move pretty quickly. I'm going to dab this all over the surface of the stamp. And here's why we've applied it nice and thin, because you don't want a lot, you don't want any goops of color, you just want a nice thin layer across the surface. And this is gonna start drying pretty quickly. So move into the next color. Here I'm using Prom Queen. I'm going to lightly tap it on the surface, blending it in with that Slippery When Wet, and then moving up the stamp. You guys can see how quick I'm working here. If you don't move super quick, the lunar paste dries really fast and it could kind of dry to your cardstock and rip it. So that's why you wanna work really quick with this. Okay, once we've applied it down onto the surface, I'm just gonna spray it down with a little bit of water. Give it about three mists. You don't need too much. And then I'll lay this right down onto the surface, place it down, and then give some good pressure all the way around with my fingers to make sure all of this makes contact with my lunar paste. Now again, don't leave it here sitting for too long. You wanna lift it off pretty quickly. Otherwise, again, it's gonna start drying to your surface. And look at that beautiful stamped effect that we've got. I'm gonna let this dry because as it dries, it'll gain its shine and become even more beautiful. I'm gonna try another cleanup just on white cardstock this time. So I'll spray that down again. I'll place this right into the stamp. And this is just a test to see how much we can really get off of here. We'll put down some pressure and we'll go in and lift it off. Oh, that's really pretty. So you could do it several different times because it's such an intense pigment in there. We get two different backgrounds, one that's a little bit lighter and then one that's on that beautiful black cardstock. Then you wanna work and clean your stamp very quickly and your surface. So for the stamp, I'm just spraying it down with more water and then we can go in and clean it off, right off the surface. And again, I didn't press too hard because I didn't want the lunar paste down in the nooks and crannies of the stamp, just on the top surface. If you do happen to get it down there, what you could do to go in and clean is use a rub it, scrub it, or some sort of spongy pad that can go in and help clean that lunar paste out of the surface. That is super helpful to help clean. To use up this excess paste, we'll go in with a little bit of water. We'll take another piece of black cardstock and just start dipping this into the surface. You wanna kind of pat it down and then move it just a little bit to lift up some of that color and help it transfer to your cardstock. And this is just kind of a mixed media background. This looks like a hot mess right now, but once it dries, it'll be really pretty and it's great for using to die cut things out of. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna sacrifice the rest of this. If you're at home, you can keep cleaning it up, but I just wanna show you, spray it down with a little bit of water and it cleans off super easily. We'll go in with a little paper towel and then I'll go in with my microfiber cloth and just clean it off even more. But you can see it cleans no big deal and you're right back to your normal glass mat. Glass mats are superior. They're super easy to clean like this. Wipe off and you're ready to move on to your next project. And check this out. Like I said, once this dries, it gains all of its shine and your stamping is beautifully metallic. So I love that we got this background. We got the little bit of a softer background on white cardstock and then this beautiful cleanup piece, which is going to be great for a die cutting out of. It's this super cool metallic cardstock. Almost looks like a galaxy. I love it. To finish off this background, I'm gonna use the beautiful Butterfly Kisses stamp set and I'll pull out some of these butterflies to do some stamping. To start, I'm just going to stamp these down using a little bit of VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is gonna give me a really great crisp jet black image. And then I'll stamp down this little one as well. Perfect. I'll throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder to set this ink into place. And then I'll heat set it until it's clear and shiny. To do the rest of our stamping, I'm gonna place this in my Misty Stamping Tool. And these have solid images in the stamp set too to help color these in. So I'm going to pull them out and then we can easily line these up on the butterfly's wings to do our stamping. And then for this bottom one, I'm going to use yellow. So I'll start off by doing a shooting star, which is our really bright yellow color. And we can stamp that first layer down. And what I love about the Misty is if you need to restamp, you totally can. So I'll stamp another layer of that shooting star just to make it a little bit more intense. To add some shading to it, I'll use a little bit of Guppy and I'm gonna start in the center of this butterfly and add a little bit of shading with just the corner of my ink pad. And then I'll lightly tap it to blend it out. And that's a really easy way to get some depth and dimension in the center of the butterfly. Then for the top one, I'm going in using a little bit of Triple Berry, which is my lighter warm toned purple. And again, I'll stamp that down onto the butterfly. And then next we'll go in using Crown Me, which is the darker purple, and we'll just add some shading to the center of that butterfly and then tap it out to help blend it in place. 
Perfect. All right, then there's also these little centers to the butterflies, which I can line up, pick up with our misty door, and then we'll really easily stamp this into place using Shady, which is our dark gray, almost black ink color. And then we'll stamp it down. And there's a coordinated die set with this, so we can easily use these dies to cut these out. So I'll just line the dies up in the center, and then we'll use some mint tape to hold it down while we run it through our die cutting machine. All right, then I'll pop these out of place and you can see just how perfectly they cut out with a nice white border. All right, then I'll place these butterflies down on kind of an angle so they look like they're fluttering and I'm adding them on some foam tape so it pops them off the surface and gives a little bit of dimension. And to finish it off, I added down the sentiment that says fluttering by to say hi from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set. I love how this card turned out with the stamping using lunar paste so you get that really beautiful shine in the background. And then finishing it off with those adorable butterflies really brings the whole card to life. I really just can't get over that beautiful shine in the background and that we were able to stamp it with such detail and precision. Now let's move into the last tool or concept that I thought was really cool, so I wanted to share it. This is a 3D embossing folder as well as a layering stencil set from Altenew that you could use either together or separately to create some beautiful projects. You guys know I've been loving embossing folders lately, and so I thought this was super cool that you can get all that detailed coloring because there's the stencils included. All right, this is a six by six embossing folder, so you could make a big square card, but I'm just gonna stick with an A2 size card, so I'm placing down a piece of stark white cardstock and I want to use this section with the bird in it. So I'll line it up where I want it, and then we can run it through our die cutting machine. For the ultimate embossing folders, I use the A and B platform base and platform top. Then I'll use the ultimate embossing folder. And then lastly, I'll place down one of the cutting plates. And this is a great sandwich for the ultimate 3D folders. And we can run it right through our machine. And when we take this out, check out all of that beautiful texture and dimension that we have on the embossing folder. I love this design and that cute little bird there too. Now moving into the layering stencil set, I'm gonna start off with this layer with all of the leaves on it. We'll place it over our design and this is really easy when it has the embossing because it almost like locks into place in that texture. And then instead of using the magnets this time, I'm just gonna use something that I know and trust won't move, which is that mint tape. Next, we'll go in with the green blending tool and I'm going to go in with a little bit of overzealous ink and we're going to blend right onto the surface. And again, I really like these blending tools for blending out larger areas. And since everything is masked off, it makes it super easy to just go in and color all of these with green and cover a lot of surface area at once. Now, if I wanna add some shading, Altenew also has these smaller brushes, which are kind of in between the little detailed blending tools that I use and the larger blending brush that they have. So I like having a bunch of different sizes depending on what kind of scale I need. And for this, I think this medium brush is gonna work really nicely. So I'll dip it into a little bit of fake plant, pick up some color. I like how long the handle is on this too, so it's really easy to hold. And then I'll just go in and start adding some shading onto the stencil. And so for this, I'm just gonna add some shading at the base of all of the leaves to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. We know I love to add several colors of ink to each layer that I do. This is super easy to blend in and not get a harsh mark in between the dark color and light color, which I really like. It's super simple to add that color and get a great gradient. Now to add a little highlight to this, I'm going in with some Psych Lunar Paste, which is this really bright lime green color. I'll go in and tap just a little bit of this paste on my finger. A little bit's gonna go a really long way. And then I'll go on the surface and just rub a little bit of this paste on onto the lighter side of this leaf. And this is just gonna add a little bit of shine and it only catches in the raised areas of the surface. So it just adds a beautiful kind of embellished look to these leaves. It really makes them pop and gives them even more dimension. And what I love about this so much is that since we have this stencil, it really makes it super easy to stay inside the lines. But I've done this technique many times, and that's the one thing that a lot of people complain about is it's kind of difficult to stay inside. So these stencils make it super easy. All right, we'll lift this off the surface and check that out. It stayed in the lines just perfectly and gave all of the leaves color. All right, I'm going in with the next layer now, which covers all the flowers. And again, these just really easily pop into place on that embossing. And then we can lay down our tape and get to blending. All right, then I'm gonna go in and start blending using a little bit of Prom Queen. And these are quite large, but again, it makes them super easy to blend. And because we got them all masked off, we can still go in with these large blending tools to blend out the florals. All right, then we'll move into a little bit of red, which is Bee Sting, and go in with our next blending brush. And then I'm going to blend that right into the pink. Look how beautifully and seamlessly that blends. Like, I love it. And with the embossing too, it's helpful to have these I forgot because the bristles go down into all that detail. So you're not left with any white space, which I really like. Let me show you here, like if you just use a blending foam, which I love, you guys know that, 
but it just goes on top of the surface and doesn't get into those little details. If that's something you want, that's a great look as well. It kind of highlights the details in the embossing, but here I want them to be nice and inked. So this is where I would go in with a blending brush, use a little bit of Crown Me ink, and again, blend it into that red color to get a beautiful and seamless blend. So there's another case scenario where you can use either tool to get different results. They're really both great. All right, then again, I'm going in with my lunar paste and these lunar pastes have matching colors, which is super exciting. I'll just apply a tiny little bit to my finger and then I'm going to go over top of the surface and just blend a little bit of this on to make it shine. Bringing in a little bee sting next and blending it with that red. All right, then you can't tell Ranger I told you this, but I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Crown Me Lunar Paste as well, right up at the top, which matches just beautifully. Mark your calendars for March 17th if you wanna see that. Then again, we'll lift this right off the surface, and now you can see that we colored in all the flowers with the inks and lunar pastes. All right, last stencil I'm going to go in and line up. It goes along with the bird and these little dots as well. Then again, I'll use a little bit of tape to hold it down onto the surface. For this, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of yellow shooting star, and I'm gonna go on the surface, fill in these little dots. Super easy with the bristles because they get into all those little details. Again, sometimes the foam blenders kind of skip over some of the details, and then I'll go in and just shade in this bird. And then to make it just a little bit darker, I'll go in using a slippery when wet color, which is my kind of mustardy yellow color. Same blending tool since we're still using that yellow uh, family, and I'm just gonna go in and blend at the tail and the head to make that a little bit darker and give some dimension. All right, then we'll lift this off, and the wing and the beak is at this different layer here. It's got a little indent there, so you know kind of that it's different. And I'll just go in and line those two up, and again, hold them in place quickly while we do our blending. And then here, I'll go in with my orange blending tool, and I'm gonna use a little bit of Roar. I'm gonna go in and fill in that little beak, and then I'm gonna go in on the wing and just do like a harsher edge and then go on the bottom and do a harsher edge and leave the center a little bit lighter. I think I like that a lot. I want that wing to shine a little bit too, so I'm going in with a tiny bit of that Roar Lunar Paste and I'm going to bring it on the surface and then sort of blend it in with my other finger to make sure that this is nice and shiny. And check out just how beautiful that is. I love all of the amazing color and shine that we were able to get using the lunar paste and using those stencils to stay inside the lines really easily. You could totally use the embossing folder or the stencil set separately, but when you combine them both like this, it just brings a wow factor on a whole nother level. I have this Spread Your Wings stamp set, so there's a lot of great bird sentiments along in this set, which I think will pair really nicely with this embossing folder. So I like to use the clear sheet to see what's going to work where, I really like this You Make My Heart Flutter. I think that's great. There's no place like home works as well, but I think I like this one to go along with the bird. I want this to stand out, so I'm doing some heat embossing, starting off using my anti-static powder tool to make sure nothing's gonna stick where I don't want it. And then I'll ink up the sentiment using Versamark Clear Sticky Ink and stamp it down onto my black cardstock. Then I'll throw over a layer of the white heat embossing powder, tap off the excess, and I like to blow on it a little bit too to get rid of any of the excess powders. Then I'll heat set this until it's nice and bright white. To finish the sentiment off, I'll go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors and cut around this sentiment. I love to fussy cut around my sentiments instead of leaving them just on a rectangle because I feel like it gives it more of a finished effect and you're able to then see more of the card that you worked on. Here I'm using my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors. They spring back out at you so your hands don't get tired when you're cutting, which I love. All right, I popped this up on some foam tape and I'm gonna use a little tweezers to help place it into place. All right, and there is our finished card. Pretty simple using that embossing folder and stencil set. I love how the inks and lunar paste stays inside the lines beautifully, and it really steals the show with all of the amazing color and dimension that it has. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought of these tools and which card was your favorite from today's video. Also, links down there is a full supplies list to everything that I used, and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.